introduce our friend Corey Hartsock. Corey, thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me tonight. I'm so thrilled to be asked to collaborate with the library and uh, the library system here in Center County. And I'm thrilled to offer a painting for your patrons this evening. Uh, I have a 16 by 20 inch stretched canvas here. Uh, in your kit, you have an eight by 10 inch, but I felt this was a lot easier for you to be able to see as we go through uh, the painting. You've got some brushes in there. You've got uh, something similar to this, which is a flat brush. And then you have a small uh, detail brush. What you don't have is a cup of water and maybe um, some paper towels for your brushes. So you may wanna gather those things real quick as we um, are getting started. But again, you know, no worries, the whole video will be posted um, tomorrow. And so you don't even have to paint tonight if you don't want, you can wait and do it tomorrow when you can stop and start the video at your leisure. So um, again, I own the painting broad, which is here in Phillipsburg at uh, 211 North Brunch Street. Uh, we started out about five years ago doing canvases and now we also offer paint your own pottery. We offer some uh, woodworking classes, some clay classes, um, birthday parties, all kinds of fun things to do here uh, in Phillipsburg. And we love to offer those uh, services to people in the region as well. So uh, we had an Airbnb owner stop in the other day and ask for uh, some business cards because she had out of town guests wondering what is there to do in the area. So we love being considered for those kinds of things. Um, I'm open without, without an appointment, come on in and uh, just stop in. You can paint a gourd, you can paint any of our wood pieces or canvases or pottery uh, with just stopping by if you need something to do. So the, my website is thepaintingbroad.com and I also have a Facebook page which is very active and the studio hours are listed there as well on Facebook. And you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at The Painting Broad. Okay, so hopefully you've got your paper towel and some water. I'm gonna um, sit down so I'm in front of the, of the canvas and please feel free to ask any questions at all. There's a couple times during the painting where we'll have to uh, sort of put the brakes on and let the paint rest and, and dry. So there'll be plenty of times for you, to, plenty of time for you to ask any questions that you may have. And I would love to know where you're watching from. Um, and if this is the first time you've heard of me or if you've been into the studio before. So let's get started. So this is the sample on an 11 by 14. That's the whale tail that we're doing this evening. So we are starting, we're gonna, you have in your kit, um, you have in your kit orange, yellow, pink, white, navy blue, and black. And so we're gonna start with the orange. And you're going to start with your flat brush, the one that the top of the brush, the bristles are flat. Uh, I'm going to use a bigger one because otherwise it'll take me forever to get this ready. So you're going to uh, give your brush a dip in, in your water, wipe it out on your paper towel. That little bit of water on the brush helps the paint spread on the canvas. And we're going to pick up some orange to get started. You're going to work left to right on the canvas. You're going to even do this top edge as well with the orange. So I am at the studio tonight and I am open tonight. So you may hear some of my favorites in the background. I'm in to paint some pottery. So you're gonna go left to right with that brush. And you'll see that if you lift your brush from the canvas, that it leaves those, leaves those streak marks. If you go the entire way from left to right without lifting your brush, it blends those in. So we've got a little bit of orange. Now I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white and continue down. On your canvas, you're going to come down about two and a half inches. You'll see here on the sample that the background, the sky, the orange and the pink, all come down about halfway on the canvas and then the rest is the water. So go ahead and bring this down about two and a half inches or so. 
So we've got some white on our brush, we've got some orange on our brush, and we're just kind of streaking that through. And I'm not lifting my brush at all as I go from one side of the canvas to the other. So yours, you'll just come down about two and a half inches. I'm gonna go ahead and get moving and bring this down a little further on this big canvas. And please let me know if you're having any trouble hearing me or if you can't see what I'm doing. I think we should be pretty good as far as being able to see it. Everything looks great and we can hear you just fine, Corey. Oh, good. Thanks for checking in. Okay, so give that um, flat brush a rinse in your water. And you're gonna wipe that off on your paper towel. So that's the cool thing about working with acrylic paint is that it can you can mix it right on the canvas like we did with those streaks of white and the streaks of orange. So some of that will dry darker than uh, than the other orange, and that's cool. That's what we want because we want to um, give it the illusion of a, a sunset sky. So now we're going to pick up with that same flat brush. We're going to pick up some of that pink that's in your kit. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little white at the same time. So you can see I've got them both, both on my brush at once. And we're going to actually start inside the orange. The orange is still wet, but we're going to, it's going to get a little bit of a, a coral color through there as we mix those together. So we're going to start in the wet, the wet paint of the orange. And again, we're going to do the same thing back and forth, left to right. I'm going to add a little more white this time. But as you go over, we don't want this to be a stripe right through here. You want to go over that line where those colors meet. Maybe even pull it up a little bit into, um, into the orange. Because you know how the sunset sky can get streaky like that. So you're going to bring this pink down about to the halfway mark. Uh, something we didn't do was we need to do the sides. So you're going to take that pink on the sides. Same with the orange. You're going to wrap that around on the side. That way, when you hang it on the wall, it looks finished. All the way left to right without lifting that brush up gives you some really nice long brush strokes, some of those really flat uh, clouds through there. I'm going to rinse my brush and go back and do the, uh, the sides with the orange. Just give it a little bit on the sides, pull this together. We've already done the top with the orange. So really blend that line in where the pink and the orange come together. The shiny parts is where it's wet. So we need to um, wait for a minute for some of this to dry right here so that we can add um, our mountains. Actually, I think we could go ahead and move on to the dark blue. If you have an extra paper plate, you can use that to kind of and the brush, if you've got a hair dryer, a hair dryer is what we use here in the studio. I have several of those. They strategically around so that people can speed the process up. So I'm not really worried about any of these spots that are wet, mostly right, 
right in here. So when we put that first mountain range on, um, it's not it's not the end of the world if it mixes with the pink, but we do kind of want to have it as, as much on top of that color as we can without it mixing together. So we're mostly drying this area right here. It's a good time to ask any questions. If you have any, I'd be happy to answer them for you. So far, Corey, it looks like we're doing really well. Good. She, we, some, well, someone would love to hear more about how you got started painting. Okay, cool. Um, well, I actually have an art degree from Shippensburg University, but I did not use that degree much to my parents' chagrin for a couple of decades. And then about five years ago, uh, a friend of mine and I started doing, <clears throat> I, someone had seen some of the paintings I was doing for fun on Facebook. And um, he owns um, Front and Center Productions here in town. And he actually messaged me and asked if I would uh, teach some classes for their patrons. And um, I did that. And I had a friend who also um, was enjoying painting and uh, she came and we did paintings together. And honestly, that's really just how it all started. Uh, from there, we started doing birthday parties and um, different events. And we were living out of our garages so where we had our storage or cars and our, in, in our garages. And um, eventually we said, well, we, can't, we need a space because we'd love to be able to hold uh, in-person classes in our own space. And um, that was five years ago. So here we are <laughs> still painting. I'm still painting and I love it. I absolutely love it. I love um, the outlet that it gives me in uh, this crazy life that we live. And um, I love being able to share it with um, everyone who comes in. So whether that's pottery or whether it's it's wood uh, or canvas. Um, it doesn't matter as, you know, I love being able to share my passion with other people. So thank you for asking. If mine is dry, yours should be dry. So since you have a little bit smaller canvas. So we are actually gonna do a little bit of mixing with our uh, navy blue color that we've got and some white. So we need to make two other blues with that navy blue that we have. So um, you're gonna use your, your, your flat brush and you can mix just a little bit um, either, you need to preserve just a little bit of the white. So if you didn't use a paper plate and you're still using those little cups, you'll need to put that, maybe pour a little bit of that white, because we're gonna use it here for this spray, a little bit of that white um, in the lid, and then we can um, mix, we're gonna mix and use another lid to mix another blue. So we're gonna do a light blue, and then we're gonna do one that is mostly just sort of in the, in the middle, a darker blue. And just keep mixing until it gets um, all the white mixed in and make sure I have two different shades of that blue. And actually end up, we still got the navy We'll still have the navy and then the medium, and this down here will be our, our light. We want to, I'm holding it at an angle so it's starting, they're all starting to mix together. So here we've got a light color. Okay, so we're actually going to start with the lightest blue that you've made. And you're still going to use your big, uh, your big flat brush or your, the flat brush that you have. We do it with the tiny one, it will just take forever. So we're gonna put some mountain ranges on. I'm gonna put that first one in the background there. Just making sure I have enough of this stuff. Okay. So that mountain range this here, it's all very, it's all very kind of random. We do wanna have one peak underneath where the sun is gonna be. So if you kind of eyeball where, um, where we're gonna put the sun in just a little bit, um, so we're gonna do almost like a upside down V 
I'm going to use just the, the tip of that brush. Bring this over here, up and down. And the rest is pretty cool. From there, we just a little bit more. Okay. So, so you're just going straight into the canvas with the tip of that brush. And we're just going to sort of sketch on. And you're going to do random, random brush strokes the whole way across, just like that. So we've got that light blue sort of mountain range. And you're just, as you go, you're just kind of making squiggles. And that's going to do the background of our mountains there. And that's about it for that color. You can wrap that around the side. So the lighter ones are in the back and then we'll do a medium and then a, um, and then the darker in the front. So it, it gives that illusion of one being closer in the foreground and that lighter mountain range being in the background. So I'm gonna rinse that out because we're gonna start with the medium color there. We might just take a second and let that so that medium color really sticks out. But what we can do while we're waiting is rinse that brush out. We're gonna pick up some of the white that we saved. And we're actually gonna prime the orange at the top there and put our, put our sun So all you're going to do is take some white and we're going to go ahead and put the circle above that mountain peak about an inch down from the bottom. And I just take the tip of my brush and twist around into a circle. We're going to let that dry. So the yellow, are there something with the pigment of the yellow that it um, doesn't play as nicely with the colors underneath it? So we need to prime it just a little bit, which means we put the, the white on first, and then when we put the yellow on, it'll really pop from the canvas. Okay, let's try putting that medium, the medium blue on now. Everybody doing okay? It looks like everyone's fine. Okay, good. Everything looks great, Corey. Oh, thanks. I'm glad it's working well. Technology, you just never know. Okay, so now we're going to do this medium, this medium blue mountain range. It'll be on top of the light blue one that we just put on there. And it's also um, just a random line the whole way across. If this part is, um, is still wet, that's okay. We'll, um, we can come back and add some more color to it. So it's not gonna be the exact same shape as the mountain range that we've already got on there. So we're going to go straight into the canvas with the tip of our brush. And we'll put, maybe we'll put one here and come over a little further, one here. And then you're just going to pull that brush across. Kind of a squiggly brush stroke the whole way across, and that will add our next mountain range. Okay. 
You want to vary how large your peaks are, and if you're going to have any, uh, you know, straight. I'm just taking that extra paint off that's here the, along this bottom one so that it dries a little easier. All right, that's the medium. Had a quick dry with our paper plate, or I've seen people blow on them. I've seen them wave their canvas around in the air, all kinds of things. That's when we decided we needed to have hair dryers in the studio to make it a lot easier. But starting to come together, we've got um, some the dark blue mountain range yet will be next. Corey, what, where do you find all your inspiration for your paintings that you do with the groups? Uh, it, sometimes I just um, pay attention to uh, what's trending with other studios. Um, I belong to a trade organization, which is several hundred um, other painting studios across the country. Like gnomes have been really big. Um, the kids' classes, you can do just about, just about anything. The kids love, you know, whatever whatever you're gonna do. We um, we did an Among Us series, which is a video game, which honestly, I've never even seen it. Uh, but those that series was really, really popular because that's what was trending with the kids at the time. So I kind of just pay attention to uh, what seems really popular, what I see in my Facebook feed, what people are talking about, um, sunsets, beaches, um, sometimes animals, but not, not too many for the adults. Um, rustic uh, country themes are always really popular. Um, lots of stuff with water, things with water are popular. Thank you. And then you just ask people. Now, Corey, do you do programs offsite and private parties also? I certainly do. So. Someone can say, you know, will you come, will you come to my house and uh, do a sip and paint at my house? And we want to do something in uh, a beach game. So I can either come up with a custom painting or they can choose from my gallery. So um, I've done a lot of garage parties, a lot of um, churches, um, social halls, fundraisers, all kinds of things. That we just take the show on the road and I bring everything that you need to complete a painting that evening for your the people who are there. So anywhere from, you know, five or six people to over a hundred. So. And you can even do that in the studio here. If you don't want to host it um, yourself, you can host it here in the studio. You're welcome to bring um, your own food and drink. As long as there's no alcohol, you're welcome to bring whatever you'd like and have a party here in the studio. But try to be as flexible as I can to accommodate people. Okay, so let's pick up that flat brush. We're gonna put the next mountain range on, which is the dark blue. And the dark blue is, is we're gonna sort of flatten it out a little bit, not quite as many peaks as uh, the ones before. So you're just gonna take some of that navy blue And we'll start over here again. You want to, you, again, you want to vary um, how tall they are. And we're just going to start to soften the mountain range as we go across. There's a few more plateaus than there are peaks this time. So I'm just taking my brush across that bottom edge. I'm gonna go ahead and all you're gonna do is fill in the rest of the canvas, left to right. 
with that good bit of that navy blue on your brush, we're going to fill in the rest of the canvas with the navy blue. Such a pretty color. Oh, I got a little white in it, but that's okay. We're going to add a bunch of color on top of this. Again, to come around the sides. You want to cover up all of the white of the canvas. So that means all the sides, the top, the bottom, all of that's going to be covered. When you put it on the wall, it'll look like it's a finished painting. So take those long brush strokes left to right, all the way down the canvas. You see, I've got some white that's mixed into mine. So if yours has mixed in, don't worry about it because the blue actually, the navy blue ends up being a background color for this part of the painting anyway. So lift it up and, and grab this bottom edge down here. I'm not gonna lift mine up right now just because um, I want you to be able to uh, keep an eye on the painting, but I will get it after we're done. I will make sure I cover that up. They so see those brush strokes that, I, that are these here, this, because I lifted my brush, I'm gonna go back over those the whole way from one side to the other. Evening that paint out. It evens those brush strokes as well. everybody's doing okay don't stress out this is still called an underpainting which means that it's not finished and we've still got lots of color to add on top but you should start to feel pretty proud of yourself at this point because you're going to have a light a medium and a dark mountain range and even if we didn't do anything else with this painting you've still created some depth here right in the middle um, right in the middle of the canvas. And um, I'm sure you've done a great job so far. That's, that's awesome. All right, so we're just gonna give that a second to dry. Rinse your brush out really well. We're gonna put a coat of yellow on top of our sun while that's drying. So let's pick up a little bit of yellow and just go over the sun. And again, I'm just, Pressing with the tip of that brush and kind of swirling around. That looks so well with the white underneath. We don't need the um, 
our water here to be totally dry before we add those colorful reflections. So just want to make sure the heaviest, the parts with the heaviest amount of paint. Start to get a little less, a little less tacky. So because we want those colors to stay on top of the dark blue. And if it's too wet, they're just going to mix in and we'll be able to see them as well. Corey, it looks like everyone's doing very well. Awesome. Now, for your studio hours, do you do you have mostly open hours or you have certain days for certain um, programs? Um, weeknights, um, you can always find the schedule at thepaintingbroad.com. But even if there's a class going on um, in the evenings, uh, it's still open for you can come in and there's no appointment necessary to paint pottery or a gourd or any of our wood pieces or anything. The studio is open Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 5 to 9 p.m. Wednesdays from 10 to 2 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 to 5. There are a couple of days in July, that um, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that I need to be closed. But other than that, we are here and we're open and ready to serve you. Uh, come on in and pick, pick a project to do. We'd be happy to help you find something that you'd like to do. There is a large variety of uh, pottery that you can choose from. There is. I'm, I'm getting new stuff in all the time. Um, so, and that also is just something that I look to see what's, um, you know, what's trending with other studios and what people are talking about. And, um, so again, gnomes are really popular. Um, vases are popular. Animal figures are popular with the kids. Um, so I've got all kinds of, um, dinnerware that once I glaze, after you paint it, then I will glaze and fire it. And it is absolutely food safe. I would treat it like a work of art. I'm not sure I would put it in the dishwasher, uh, but they're definitely able to be, um, they're definitely able to be used and they're food safe. Any plates, cups, bowls, spoon rests, all that fun stuff, um, all is food safe once, it, once you pick it up and take it home. So it usually takes me about a week uh, to get it fired in the kiln for you to come back and get it. There is the option to paint it with acrylic paint and take it home the same day if you'd like to do that. It's just not quite as permanent and it's not food safe. So some of our animal figurines, people like to paint those with acrylic paint and take them home the same day. And the prices vary. And you're, to paint something on the small side, you're probably looking at about $20 a person. If they're, each piece is priced individually. And then there's a, a $6 fee for me to blaze and fire it for you. All right, let's put some reflections in the water. So we're gonna do, let's start with some of the pink first. And I'm actually gonna, I have some that's mixed in with the white. So you can actually pick up both colors at the same time. And again, we're still using, we're really only gonna use that, the tiny detail brush. If you want to fix anything that, you know, you may not have gotten a sharp enough edge, up here, you can do that if you want. If you don't have a sharp enough edge on the on the sun, you can do that. But we're going to use our flat brush for most of this. So pick up some pink on the end of your brush. And again, we're going straight into the canvas with the tip of that brush. So just like, just like that, we're just using the tip. And we're going to make these lines across the water that uh, will be our reflections. So I'm going to take some pink. And I kind of, I kind of have a, a flick of the wrist, kind of just make this motion and um, it's going to go in the background to you all the way underneath that whale tail. Um, and we'll cover that up with black. So you can just start putting some color through the water, just with the tip of that brush. I'm not pressing very hard because we don't need a whole lot of paint on there. And I'm gonna pick up some yellow. I'm not even rinsing my brush. I'm just going right into the yellow because I like some of those coral colors 
that come from the yellow and the pink mixing together. What you are gonna do is directly underneath the sun, we're gonna put a little bit extra. Again, just with the tip of that brush, maybe a couple over here, but we're gonna keep some just underneath the sun. Let's take a little bit of white too. Maybe shorter strokes for that. So because we're not using a whole lot of paint, this part should dry uh, pretty quickly to get the whale tail on there. I'm just using the rest of the paint that's on my brush to kind of, you don't need to fill it in, but we're being pretty generous with those reflections on the water. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to leave it there. It looks like a little wave. Kind of happened when I first put the white on there. You come straight across here. I'm just using the very last little bit of paint that's on my brush. It's going to be getting a little bit of haze on top of the water. Right at that sort of horizon. So the thing about acrylic paint is that you can always add more. So my, my uh, suggestion is always to go in with just a little bit, and then you can always add more if you need to. So I'm going to let that dry a minute, and I'm going to take a little bit of my the light blue that we made, and I'm just going to make add a little bit more of a peak to a couple of my mountains. Adding a couple of, of details here on this one, um, the, the brush didn't fill it in quite as much, so I want to make sure that I filled in there. And you can do the same with the navy. Cross this bottom mountain range. So I hope I wasn't going too fast for, you know, I've done this painting before, so it's a little, well, it's a lot easier for me to just kind of buzz right through it. So, but the cool thing about this Zoom um, event is that you'll be able to come back at it um, tomorrow and you'll be able to uh, pause it as, as you wish and, and paint at your leisure. So I hope, um, Everyone had enough time to paint along with me tonight. And if you didn't, I apologize. And I'll look forward to uh, seeing you on the replay and you'll be able to stop and start as you wish.
So I put a little extra when I went across this medium blue mountain range. Um, it's just a stitch darker than what I had on there originally. So I'm kind of just blending that in a little bit. So it's not quite so obvious that that's a little bit darker. So you see over here, this is a little bit darker than before. So I'm just kind of adding some on top of there to blend it in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and leave that little bit of dark blue there. Corey, what would you say to any folks who worry halfway through that their painting isn't looking exactly as they imagined? Because all paintings are going to look different. They're all going to look different. Now, if we were here in the studio together, um, what I would say is don't definitely don't stress about um, definitely don't stress about that. It's each person's painting is going to be totally different at the end of the night. We will we take a picture together um, of everybody's paintings together, and it's very rare that someone doesn't like what they have done because you see them all together, and they, they are the same painting, but they all have a little bit of each person's flair. Uh, so that is that's probably the best part of the night is the end when we take a group picture together and. Um, and people can see that theirs looks just as good as everybody else's, you know. It's not going to look like mine. I have a paintbrush in my hand almost every day. Um, so it's not it's not going to look exactly like mine, and I wouldn't want it to. I would want it to look exactly like yours, you know. So just relax. Um, follow the instructions as, as best you can. And... Um, and cut yourself some slack because it's it's I know they're going to look amazing. This is um, this painting is a lot of fun to do and um, with the blending of the colors and and all of that. So hopefully you will um, enjoy the time that you've had in front of the canvas and um, just relax and and let it flow. No, it's not it's not meant to be something that stresses people out it's meant to definitely be an outlet and a, a place for you to express yourself on a canvas okay so let's give that um let's give that tiny brush a rinse i'm going to take some orange some straight orange and we are going to go over top of the sun don't stress out. You're just going to make horizontal lines, and I just kind of get my hand going before I before I touch the brush to the canvas. I'll take a little white in there too, just a little bit. Clouds go across the sun like that. So while we were doing those, um, the details, we should have had, I should have had time for all of this to dry in here where a whale tail is going to be. So we are going to sort of sketch on uh, we're going to sketch the outline on with our small detail brush, and then you're welcome to use the flat brush to fill it in. So um, we're going to, I'm not going to lie, for me, I thought that the tail was the hardest part, but let's walk through it. 
because the shape is really kind of um, really kind of unique. It's very it's very wide. I actually did it, covered it up, and started over. So um, if you do that, if you decide you you really don't like the way yours turned out, let it dry, cover it up with the navy, and start again. And then you'll just have to fill in the reflection. So that's the cool thing about acrylic paint is that you can cover you can even cover up that black. It's a as unforgiving as the black is, the paint still allow, once it's dry, the paint does allow you to uh, cover things up so you can do it over. So I think we're going to start with the um, the outside edges first, and we're going to get that shape on there. We'll come back in with the uh, the sort of the top uh, curved part of the tail. So it's it's wide is what I was saying is that I started and it was a little it was more condensed and it didn't look realistic. And so we're I mean as even though this is a, um, a canvas painting, we're going we're going to try and make it as realistic. So you want you want the sides to come in towards the middle and you want some of it to start here so that it sort of pops off the canvas a bit and um, is over top of that, that lighter color. So we're gonna just start, we're just gonna give it a whirl. And I think these are a little more curved than, um, than what's on here. So we're gonna start with, we start about here. You do want it. It's going to be. You want it to be tilted, and you wanted it. To, you want it to be under the sun. So, and then you're going to do a matching one as as best you can on the other side. Okay, so you've got those. And if they're not even curved the same, and that's okay. Um, you've got it's all it's it's a sort of a V shape, but you've got them curved a little bit coming from the top down towards the center. And then up here, it's almost like a, a mustache brush stroke that um, that joins them, and then this divot here in the middle will end uh, in the middle of the tail. So, so you see how that brush stroke and then goes pretty close to the middle. So it almost looks like a mouth. It almost looks like lips and then the bottom, you, the bottom is pulled down a little bit, but I'm gonna put a little Curve up here, top part. Same over here, but pointed inwards. I'm left-handed, and I tend to, you know, if the paint's dry, I tend to steady my hand on the on the canvas, or I use my my pinky to steady my hand. I'm not very good with my. Um, just you know, out here. So I like to steady my hand if I'm going to be doing any uh, detail work. So then here, where it comes together at the bottom, we're just going to flare this out a little bit like that. Now take your flat brush and go ahead and fill that in. Taking that black paint, filling in the end of the tail. Not worried about what this looks like right here. We just want to bring it down a little bit so that we can cover it up really. We want it to look like the tail is definitely down in the water.
I really I like added I like that we added these this I'm sure there's a technical name for them, but these parts that curl in that makes it look a little more realistic. <laughs> I saved my mistake over here when we first started putting those reflections on. All right, looking good. I wish I could see the ones that from home. That would be so cool. All right, so now that we've got the tail on there, and you know what? I'm not even bothered by the fact that the two sides don't look the same. I think it looks kind of neat. It, nothing's ever perfect. Like when we do trees or we do flowers or um, you know, people get hung up on them looking perfect, but none of them look perfect in nature. So um, it's a little bit too high of an expectation to put um, to put on yourself to make it look uh, everything look exactly uniform. So I'm cool with this that it doesn't look exactly the same. So I'm going to take the end of my um, my flat brush again. I'm going to take a little bit of <clears throat> the navy blue. If this is not dry, you want to hit that with your paper plate. And we're just going to take some color over top of the end of the tail so that it looks like it's actually down in the water. So this, we're still using our left to right um, brush strokes. You see that? How it, and you don't even have to cover all of that up, giving that illusion that that part is uh, hidden by the water just a little bit. I'm gonna leave that there. Cause I like that it looks like it's, you know, you can see down in the water just a little bit. Okay, so we use a little bit of that navy to cover up the end of the tail. I'm gonna take just a smidge of the yellow over top, blend with a tiny bit. I'm trying to preserve this part that looks like it's down in the water. Maybe a smidge of paint. Super light touch with the end of that brush. You're just using a little bit of paint and you're barely touching the canvas. So all we have left to do is our spray coming from behind the tail. Typically I use a round brush for this, but I think I'm gonna go in with my detail one. And you're gonna pick up some white. And you're actually just gonna, um, you're just going to dab it around the outside edges and maybe maybe some coming down from the tail. So just a little bit, just a little bit of paint on the brush. See that, to, for me, that's too much. I'm gonna come back to it after the brush is a little bit more, has taken most of the paint off. This maybe has some dripping down over here. Add some more here. Go over those ones that feel like they're too, too bright and it can come over top of the tail a little bit too. So like I said, it's, it's hard, it's better to start with not enough paint on your brush for these kinds of details and add more 
rather than get in there with um, with too much paint because it's much harder to remove it than it is to just add more to it. I'm gonna spill everything. I'm gonna spill my water. So you just kind of adding some of these dabs with the tip of that detail brush. It's gonna give you what looks like spray and drops coming off. On the sample, I actually used a different brush that you don't have. So that's why the, um, the spray looks different. And hopefully you were able to preserve a little bit of your white to go in here with some bright white and these details. Just the tip, just the tip of that brush. I'm gonna just leave that like that. Kind of looks like it's going into that little where the stick. So the less brush that's uh, the less paint that's on your brush makes it look more like um, the spray. <coughs> it's a technique we use when we do a beach uh, beach spray as well. Then as there's less paint on your brush, it just naturally starts to get lighter as you go. What else we can do is just do a quick highlight through here. That's with the tip of your brush. So the very last step of any painting is to sign it. So you'll use that tiny detail brush and whichever color you'd like. And I usually use the bottom right hand corner, but you can sign it whatever you want. And there you have it. That's the whale tail. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Let me know if there's any questions. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't see any more questions. Okay. So I would like to thank you, Corey, for presenting this wonderful event for our library patrons. I hope that everyone enjoyed their evening. And if they are in the Philsburg area, I hope they stop by and see your studio. It, there's so much more that they can see beyond the little painting. Your, your studio is a very nice size and it has so many great opportunities. Well, we really appreciate the opportunity to join you tonight. Thank you so much for reaching out. I hope everyone had a great time and I hope we'll see y'all in the studio real soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.